Realistic Baby Alligator Acrylic Painting Time Lapse and Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Paper. Hi everyone! In today's video I'm going to be showing you another baby animal, but not one that's in her room. It's just one that's actually, it's hung in my house. It's a little baby alligator. It's a photo, it's from a couple pictures that I took when I was, I met, I say met, but I saw some alligators that were rescued that were about three months old and so I took lots of pictures. Uh, I love taking pictures of little animals to use for my paintings and so this one I just, it's been in my collection for so long. I'm like, you know what? I need to paint these little alligators. So that's what this is. It's an acrylic painting. I hope you guys like it as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So to begin with, I'm going to airbrush the background. I think an airbrush does a really great job for creating that soft autofocus appearance. So for under the water, it's all brown tones and browns and blacks pretty much. And then above the water, kind of behind the water line in the back is a lot of browns with some greens uh, for some trees and some foliage. So there's a first layer of brown. I kind of had some like a yellow, a yellow brown color, kind of a golden color, and then more of a chocolate brown and just airbrush, fill it in. So when you're using the airbrush, try not to create uh, too detailed, especially in the backgrounds. The farther out you go, the less detailed you want to be, the fuzzier it is. So the legs that I airbrushed, which I do at the end here, you'll see those are a little bit more detailed and a little bit closer in with the airbrush. So also add some green and some brown on the water itself because that's going to reflect up. Add some white highlights. You want to be nice and bright and sunny looking. And then after that layer of paint is completely dried, paint uh, with painter's tape, you're going to want to mark off the water line and then add a little shadow underneath it around where the alligator is. That'll just make that line really sharp and really make it so it looks like it is a nice sharp water line on there. And then with uh, grays, black and white, add the little airbrush behind or the legs that are farther from the camera. So the ones that are behind, it's one front leg and one back leg that are behind. Then with light gray paint, I'm going to take and I'm going to be painting the base shape for my alligator underwater so I didn't worry about the head right now I'll do that later that was the last thing I wanted to do and then I'm just so I just body and then the two legs and the reason I did it was just with the grays because I knew that color wouldn't be too intrusive and I can just paint over it but I like to have a an idea of what I'm painting and since I had some airbrush paint go over all of my little sketch lines it's nice just to kind of refine where the alligator is is kind of the way I think of it so then with uh, charcoal white black tan beige brown that family of color I'm going to be adding alligators have these rows of scales going down their tail so you're going to be adding those they're not very big they're not too sharp or pokey or pointy or anything but there's little scales going all the way down all the way down the tail so add those first those are I kind of want to work from butt to head if that, if that makes sense so I'm going to be starting out with the tail and kind of working my way forward in a lot of my paintings you'll see and this is you don't have to do it this way this is completely preference but I like to start sort of away from the face and then work my way towards the face if you've watched my previous videos you may have noticed that I thoroughly enjoy painting the little animal faces little noses little eyes and everything and everything like that and because I like to paint those I every once in a while you're working on a painting and you get bored with it this doesn't happen all the time but sometimes you're like you know what I have painted fur for the past seven hours. I'm done painting fur. I need to step away from this for a while. And I find for me, if I have a thing, if I have something that I'm really looking forward to painting, saying a couple little whiskers that I'm really, I love painting, you know, they're just those little things that you really like to do that are your favorite part of it to work on. If you save those for the end, it keeps you going. It keeps, you know, you have something to look forward to. But if you do your favorite part in the beginning, then it's like, well, that's done. Now all I have left is 12 hours of fur over and over and over again. And you don't have that exciting thing to look forward to anymore because it's already done. So I like to always save the eyes for the end and the small details that I'm really looking forward to. I save those for later. And on the tail, so you got those top scales and then you have these bands, these rows of, of just little kind of flat scales that just go along the the bottom of the tail the edge of the tail so those ones go down in stripes then i'm going to work on his tummy so as you can see just with charcoal paint i sketched in the stripes that the scales are within and i'm going to if you do that first they kind of build in size as they go across the stomach and as they get closer to that front arm if you have them if you just try to start filling them in you might not have the progression of size quite as um level as you'd like it to be but if you pre-sketch in the little barricades for each row of scales it gives you a better idea of what you're what you're working on so 
I would just recommend doing that. And with these scales, they're a lot more of that cream color or tan or beige. So don't make them too dark or too charcoal-y. But don't make them too bright either because these are in a shadow. So as you can see, they still have some, I don't know, some darker gray on, on them too. So work on those. As they get closer to that front arm, they do get to be pretty wide, pretty big. And then continue going up. So as so I did that bottom layer of the tummy, and then I'm going to work my way up. As they go up, they get to be much smaller. So these first ones are, these first ones near that arm are pretty big. And I just kind of fill in, piece them in bit by bit, and fill them in around as they, as they go up. And then start working in and adding. So that's, yeah. So then you're going to want to add a line, another line here. That's going to be for the shadow versus the highlighted area. So the sunlight is right above this little alligator, actually, in this situation, because I had to take him and he was in an aquarium. It was a huge aquarium. It was amazing. It was a gorgeous uh, setup that they had. But it's directly above the light that they had was directly above them. So there's this really nice, easy to see line going down their side from where the light can hit, where the light hits directly to where it's more diffused on the sides of them. So I have that little line so I know where to start where to stop my darker scales and where to add the highlighted ones it kind of just helps you out again these are all just sketch lines if you want to uh, skip them you can go ahead so whatever you prefer i like to kind of if you're just sort of in a zone you just are painting and painting and painting scales you can easily go over the top of where you were meaning to stop and just go too far so i added all of the lighter scales all the cream colored ones in that next section and then i'm going to go back through and add the ones that are charcoal when you're painting the charcoal ones, make sure that they're not too dark and they're not too black where you can't tell the different lines of them. Keep them a little bit brighter so that you can see that you did take the time to paint all of these little circular scales. They're not just, it's not just going to get muddy and flat looking. So keep filling them in. There's a lot of them here. And when I'm doing this, I'm using a nice round brush that creates really, um, can go from really pretty wide lines to really thin lines. It helps you just to make sure that you can get all the little details in there. So when I'm doing this, I don't, I don't know if you guys can really see what is going on very well, but I painted a section of what I'm working on, the area that I'm working on with the charcoal color paint. And then I took some white or some light gray, depending on where it is. And I just kind of highlighted around the perimeter of the scale. That way you have between them filled in with the charcoal color, but they have that nice highlight going around the edge of them. So that's what I'm doing there. So it's just these scales here are just little, little circles. It's not really scales as much as it is textured skin so continue on with that and then near the leg they get to be more in stripes and they're more um, more paneled more square so then I'm going to go through and I'm going to be adding those ones that are in the highlighted above where the sun can hit them or the light can hit them so make sure that they're a little bit brighter than those ones below not so much that you can see and it's like wow that's a weird line there but just enough that you know your eye will give your alligator some nice rounded shape and you can see that he is you know he is not just a a flat thing he does have some he does have some roundness to him so then continue filling these in i know it's kind of a tedious process like i said you'll be painting scales for seven hours and need something to look forward to when i whenever i'm painting something that's got a lot of scales or a huge section of fur that seems to just be repetitious and you're kind of doing the same thing over and over and over again one of two things happens. I mean, it kind of depends on my mood, I think. Either I'm painting these and I'm hitting myself on the head thinking, why did I decide to do this? It is the most tedious process I've ever done. I've been at this for hours and I've worked my way through four inches of canvas. This is taking forever. And, you know, just kind of thoughts that go through your head. Or you kind of get into a zone and it's almost like meditation. And all of a sudden you're like, oh my goodness, six hours have gone by and I haven't eaten anything. It's just you know the way that way that kind of goes and it really helps to be in the right mindset before you start a, something that is kind of repetitious like that and make sure that you aren't going to eventually be hitting yourself upside the head thinking why did I even start this to begin with so yeah it's just you know something that's especially this is a pretty big canvas like I said I, or I guess I don't know if I've mentioned this this is um this is life size so it's it's pretty big I remember when I saw these little guys they were they're not that big when you consider an alligator, but they are, they're still so big for little babies. All right, so then I'm going to work on the legs. The legs have all this, every section of this animal has, the scales go in sort of different directions or different shapes. They have different looks, but they're all within that same color. So it's using the same colors throughout the entire thing. On the legs, however, I did start with just the gray tones, the gray scale, and then I went through and I added little bits of that tan caramel color over the top of it. Then on the foot, I added the scales with little white highlights. 
and I diluted my white paint so it wasn't the same strength all the way across. Add their toenails with really bright white and then wash over it with some highlights of white and black. Highlights and lowlights, I suppose. And then do basically the same thing on the front arm. So now to do his face, same thing. I started out with a layer of gray paint just to refine the lines. And then I'm gonna go through and start adding. It's not really as scaled on the face. And the other thing with the face is that it's not as in focus as the rest as that body is. It is in focus, but it's just a little bit, a little bit off. Um, so I didn't go through and it's not nearly as sharp line. Uh, the lines aren't as sharp or as detailed. It's just a little bit, a little bit softer looking. So just going over that and then add the eye. This little alligator's eye is really bright green compared to the rest of the body. Usually, I don't know, your mind, you think an alligator is green. He's all brown and gray, but that eye is really nice and bright green. Then, same thing, soft focus. I'm going to be adding one little bit of bubbles on the background. I also, I somehow missed recording this, but I added bubbles along the waterline as well. I've always said that the next reptile that I had gotten as a pet, I would name Ellen Gator, and I have a pet, uh, chameleon but he got named Raph instead so this is my new Ellen I hope you guys like it and check out my Facebook and Instagram for more art and I'll see you in my next video bye